and obviously to say that to everyone else who's on the call you've probably heard it a few times at least we are recording this session so please let me know if you're not happy with that um and just to say um jamie you've got till 2 30 um okay. and what we'd really like you to focus on in in your demonstration is the sort of core capability within the care planning yeah, um, sure. system that would be great yeah, all right I'll, I'll hand over to you thank you for starting the recording no that's so, absolutely fine over to you jamie Perfect. So uh, thank you, everyone, for having me on. I recognise a couple of names in the uh, in the chat already. So some of you are probably familiar with uh, with PCS. Um, so just to introduce myself. So my name's Jamie. I'm business development manager here at Person Centred Software. Uh, so what my job essentially is to do is to go through the go through the system, uh, answer any questions anybody's got um, and see if it's a correct fit for you guys, really. So what I'm going to do without further ado is I'll just share my screen. And I'm hoping that there's uh, I'm sharing now and you can see a care app. So just to give you a bit of a background about PCS. So we've been around since 2014. Uh, we currently work with over 3600 care providers across the UK. So uh, we, we were on the market leader in terms of digital care planning. Um, with PCS, uh, we work very, very closely with CQC. So uh, assessments are taken directly from CQC. Um, if there's any changes in regulations, if there's any updates in their legislation, PCS are aware of these and will update the system accordingly with that. Uh, and there is a feature where you can it helps you demonstrate evidence of compliance against uh, Chloe's as well. So with PCS, there's a two prong system. So first and foremost, you have the care app, which is what I'm showing you at the moment. Uh, so this is where your care staff would log in on a device. Either, you know, we recommend, you know, we can supply devices to you or if you have your own devices, that's possible for that for the app to be used on as well. We do recommend steering clear of putting the app on own personal devices, though, because uh, that opens up GDPR issues. Um, so on the device, each member of their care staff will log in. They can log care notes on this device and that will automatically feed into a system here called Monitor. Uh, so the Monitor system, this has your care plans, this has your reports, this has your charts. Um, so any changes within here will reflect within the care app. And likewise, anything that's noted in the care app will automatically feed into a Monitor, such as charts, for example, being updated automatically. So a couple of things to be aware of, or the main thing really to be aware of on the Care app is that everything is icon driven. So there's icons in relation to alerts, like you can see here on the home page, but also icons in relation to logging care notes, which we'll come to in a moment. So what I'll do is I'll put for a couple of care notes and I'll show you the journey of how where that goes and how that logs. So for example, uh, on the home page, you'll see that Carol, First and foremost, she's got a blue icon in the top right corner of her profile uh, that indicates that there's risks in place for Carol. So when we've set her up on our system and we've completed her assessments, we've completed her uh, her forms, we've completed her care plans, any risks that have been identified as a result of that will automatically feed into the care app. And if I click on Carol's profile here, you will see those risks scrolling across at the top of her, of her profile. And if I click on those, it will bring them up in a dialogue box here. So that includes uh, physical risks such as diabetic, frequent falls risks, as you can see here. But also if 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 they've got, say, ADHD, autism, learning disabilities, etc., that also pulls through onto the care app for your staff to see as well. Uh, Alf. He has um, a red icon, so that just indicates that there's risks in place for ALF, but also that he has a DNA CPR in place for him at the moment. Um, for some of the residents, you'll see here we've got butterflies. So the butterflies represent the six golden step framework for end of life palliative care. So each butterfly represents a different stage of, of their palliative care stage. Um, happiness icons here, like you can see for ALF and for Ella. So when we log a care note on the system, you'll notice um, it will ask us to record the resident's mood. Two reasons for this. Firstly, it alerts care staff to anybody who's unhappy or if there's any, uh, you know, any issues in there, it will show up for every member of care staff to see. And also, um, you may have noticed that some of these icons, well, these icons here for Alf and for Ella, they've started to fade. 
So after about 20 to 30 minutes of a, of a care note being logged and their mood being uh, logged, this will start to fade. So, so what that also tells me is that within the last half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour, someone has been to see Alf and someone has been to see Ella. So maybe I'll focus my time on Colin or Janet, for example. And then last but not least, there are flags. So the flags represent must do planned care actions. So any care that you decide uh, for, for your residents that has to be delivered at a specific time and it's must do, must be completed. So what the flags are is they alert your staff to those must do planned care actions. So three different colour flags will appear. First and foremost, a white flag appears an hour before the planned care is due. At the time of care, it will change to a yellow flag and then if for whatever reason the care hasn't been logged on the system within within a time frame you specify it will change to a red flag to let you know that it's overdue so what i'll do here is i'll go into alf's profile if i click into alf's profile here you can see any notes that have already been logged on the system and you can click into those and you can see which member of staff logged that care note and at which time and what the care note says so you've always got that digital footprint on here excuse me uh, and also you can add in things to their diary so if they've got event if they've got activities coming up if they have lunch dinner at a specific time if they've got a visitor coming in that kind of thing you can add that to, you can add that on here as well so say for example i was giving alf his lunch um and pretending it's at 12 it's at 12 15. um what i would do is i'd click into this icon uh, now, what you can set up in the system are preferences. So we've got here to say that ALF is a choking risk, which shows up in his risk scrolling across at the top here, and therefore he needs assistance with cutting uh, cutting his food up. But also his preferences is the fact that he likes to try and do it himself, but also you might need a bit of prompting to, to, uh, to help him do so. If you're giving a resident a meal or you're giving them a drink, you can add in those preferences as well. So it's just evidence of person-centred care. Uh, which what CQC love. So all we would do here to record this care, we just click on the icons. So where did he have his where did he have his uh, lunch? He had it in the dining room. What was the food of choice? So maybe we've given him a lamb dish, portion size standard. What was his appetite? He ate everything. Food texture preparation. We know we need to cut this and make it soft. And how was our feeling? He felt very happy as a result of that. And just by clicking those icons, it writes out that care story and it writes out those care notes for us. And all we would do now is complete and it would now update Alf's profile within the system. What else that will do is it will also update his uh, food chart within monitor. Uh, within the dashboard so when we run our reports and i'll show you i'll show you how you do this in a moment it will bring up those care notes and it will include that in his charts automatically so what i'll do is i'll go into monitor now and i'll show you his chart and i'll look at meals charts run that report and you can see here we've got broken it down we can see it overall as a home i'm just going to look at alf specifically here and you can see it's already started to log those care notes for us and it's updated his charts. So it follows through that whole journey. So as we said, up to log once and it updates everywhere within the system. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll just give you a couple more examples of, of care notes because obviously not everything happens at a specific, not everything has set timings on it within care as we know. So what you can utilize here is you can utilize the ad hoc uh, ad hoc button so if we're going to log some care for alf as it when it's happened so say for example uh we've helped alf uh have a wash and we've helped him change his clothes and he's also for example you know brushed his hair as well uh, actually not let's not do brush chair uh brush hair let's say we've checked fingernails for example so you can log more than one more than one care no, uh, more than one activity icon at a time again so it brings through those preferences here for you so you can say what level of help was needed. So we needed to give him a lot of assistance. Again, how was he feeling? And he's checked, changed his clothes. We've changed it just to change them over. And again, we log that as and when it happens. Now, what you can do as well is you can include these, uh, include this in handover notes as well. So if I, if anything unusual has happened, if I'm logging an accident or an incident, or if I want to include it in handover, I'll just mark any of those many of those tiles here complete and it will update for ALF now as well. 
also within the uh, within the platform you've got handover notes for your staff so all i have to do swipe across to the right and i've got all of my handover notes that have been recorded within the system these will go back as far as 24 hours and it will break it down to timings specifically so anything you've marked as manually uh including manually including handover any accidents, any incidents, anything to do with a resident's health, so say if a doctor's come, if you've measured their blood pressure, that kind of thing, updated their weight, that will automatically be included in handover notes. So what I would do is I would read through these uh, on, each, on each resident's basis, confirm that I've read the handover notes, and therefore that is me taking ownership and taking responsibility to say that I've read the handover notes as well. And you can track which members of your care staff have read handover notes, most importantly. And the last little bit of the app that I want to show you is on a residence page, you can see medical information in more detail. So it goes into more detail about those risks that we've described uh, or that we that are pulling through here. You've also got a who I am document as well. So this pulls through data such as routines that are important to the resident, uh, what they like to talk about. If you've got a personal behaviour support plan in place, what their planned outcomes are, what their triggers are, what their primary, secondary and last resort interventions are as well. It will pull through all of that data straight through onto the care app for your care staff to see. You've got a how best to support me page in terms of things like summary care needs, mobility, Parkinson's, uh, communication and so on and so forth. So what this is designed to do is that if you've got an agency worker come in or you've got new members of staff start, they're able to pick up a device and they've got as much information to hand about that service user as possible. So that's the uh, care app. I'm hoping everyone's still following me so far. Um, but what I'll do is I'll show you where this all updates in Monitor. So in Monitor, this is what management staff will have access to. You've got the exact same icons that appear on the care app that appear here on your dashboard. So you can see who's been seen to recently. It alerts you to anyone who's in a, you know, feeling in a negative mood or feeling unhappy. And you can also track those uh, planned actions too. Now, reports are automatically generated within the system as well. So if you wanted to run a care note report, so say you need to provide all evidence of care notes for a specific service user within a time frame. So if I want to run a weekly report, I'm just going to run this report here, select input my date range, and I'm going to select my service user. So I'm going to select ALF, hit refresh, and it will bring up every single care note that was recorded in the system within that time frame. Importantly, it breaks it down to what what day, which member of staff logged that care note, what time of day they logged that care note as well, and importantly, when they logged it, uh, what was logged, sorry. You can also do the same thing for staff members. So you can, if you're looking at performance reviews, if you're looking for training needs, you can see here uh, on a start on a staff member basis, a uh, staff member basis, I should say, uh, what they have logged as well. So, like I said, if you're looking at my care notes here, you can look at me and see uh, if I need to add any if you are areas for development, areas for training, etc., within the care notes that I've logged on the system. And you can search by keyword. So say you wanted to look at who's been to see the doctor, you can run a report and it will pull through every care note within the time frame that has that keyword attached to it. Um, another useful tool are QR codes. So what many providers will do that use PCS for things like night checks, they will print the QR code off, they'll put it above the service user's bed. The member of staff that's performing the night check will go in with their device, They'll scan the QR code and that provides evidence of them being in the room to perform that uh, to perform that night check. It timestamps it as well to say they were in here at that specific time. So it will it would avoid a scenario where a care, where they say they've been in, but they haven't been in. This actually provides that evidence to say, yes, they've been in the room and they've checked they've checked on them as well. Charts, as we touched on, they're automatically updated. So anything we've logged in the care app automatically creates and generates their charts in here. So if we look at, say, fluid charts, as an example, um, it will break it down to things like how much has been offered against how much has been consumed by that service user on a specific day. And it also includes other fluid sources in there, such as things like jelly. Uh, if, if you've given them that, it will include that in here too. What I'll do now is I'll go into reporting with the care plans. So 
if I look at Alf's profile here, um, I'm hoping you will never ever see this amount of red if you use PCS. Uh, so we run a traffic light type system. Uh, so green, if all the tiles are appearing in green, it means everything's up to date. So their assessments are up to date, the care needs are up to date, uh, wound care is up to date, everything that you see here, it's all up to date. Amber means that it is due for review and red obviously means that it's overdue, which is why I say hopefully you'll never see this amount of red within uh, within their profile. So this will alert you to things like a must score. So what their current must tool must score is um, what their if we've got Alf on a fluid watch. So you can see here what his uh, current fluid status is. We've also got the same for a bow watch as well. Um, assessments that are due for review what you can do you can click straight into those and click straight into an assessment and it will take you through to complete uh, and it will take you through to complete it i should say now if you ever complete um complete assessments say monthly for example you can set dates when it will alert you to review those and importantly it will save the answers from what you put in last time so you haven't got to keep re-entering the same information into the system it all pulls through. Uh, it remembers those answers that you've put through as well. <coughs> Excuse me. One other thing that I just wanted to touch on before we go into the main care, before covering sort of care planning, is um, if you are a data security and protection toolkit, if you've completed that and you are a minimum of standards met, what the system will allow you to do is to have access to something called GP Connect. So GP Connect is a link into the GP records. So for this service user here, you can see things like their encounters, you can see problems and issues of the major and, and active and inactive, allergies, medication, encounters, referrals, clinical items, observations, that everything that you would need to normally call up to get from the GP, you can link directly in and you can have access to that. Um, what you the only thing you need for this is the NHS number of the service user that you have and you can start pulling through GP records. Now across the UK there's uh, I think there's just under 700 care providers that have access to GP Connect. 600 of those use person centered software to link in uh, link into their GP Connect as well. In addition to that you can also send your hospital pass electronically as well. Uh, so hospital pack is automatically generated and automatically created within the system. So if I go into ALF's hospital pack here, it will take a second to load because obviously it's quite a large document. Excuse me. There we are. Again, 95% of this information is already filled in. So it will include things like Restore 2, News 2, all of that is included in here. His medical history is included, uh, medications and allergies, recent illnesses, recent GP visits, that uh, recent handover notes, all of that will be included in here. And down the left hand side here, you've got a hospital admission process. So what it, this enables you to do is to include everything that you need to include. And once you hit save and submit, it will send it to the hospital electronically. And that sends it through something called e red bag. Um, so it's a quicker way of getting that hospital pass across to the uh, across to uh, across to the hospital, funnily enough, and uh, it, it, it's, it should be saving you on paper and on time. So there's no danger of them losing this. But what we'll do, we'll go into the care planning now. So if ever you're reviewing a care plan or reviewing assessments, any assessments you complete will sit on this page here for a resident. Uh, it will tell you what the what the date that you completed an assessment was, what the assessment was and what the score was as well. Now, our assessments here, um, they are taken from CQC. If there's any that you don't include or don't need, you can uh, remove them. And likewise, if you want to make any mandatory, you can do as well. The ones with the play symbols and also your forms too. So what this will do is it will pull through the data from your assessments and your forms that you've completed and it will pull it into a document called the current one that decides to load the current assessment. So the current assessment document, this pulls through the data from the assessments and the forms that you've just filled out and it identifies risks that have been associated with that and it, and it prompts you and helps you with writing up those notes for those care plans. So for example, if I'm looking at cognition here, we've identified four 
risks for ALF's memory. If I click on those, it will tell the tell you what the assessments are that that's come from and also what the risks have been identified are. What you can do in the text box underneath is you can write up your notes, you can include those, write up your person centered notes and just underneath that it will suggest the areas that you may want to link this uh, information to. So the part of, so which care plans you may want to link that to. So we've identified four risks for Alf's memory. So we may want to include this in his care plan for communication, daily life, consonants, and et cetera, et cetera. So you could fill that in and then it generates a document. It generates your care plans. So again, I'll just give this a second to load. Generates your care plans. So you can add in a short term care plan if you need to. Um, if there's any care plans here that you don't utilize, so say you don't put one in, you don't need one for communication, you just don't generate it. It really is that simple. Um, but then let's say we're looking at consonants for ALF. You can call it something different and you can change the aspect of life that it relates to. You've got full review comment history down the side here. So you've got full audit history on who has said what and when. You can end the need and you can say and you can say that they've made progress, they've declined or they say stayed the same. And what you can do, those green subheadings are being pulled through from that current assessment document that I just showed you. So what that will do is uh, you can select the headings and select the data and the notes that you've just included to include it in this care plan. Underneath that. I just scroll down. You can summarize and write in their care needs. You can add in short term and long term outcomes and goals, what they're able to do themselves, description of care actions as well. And also for your for, to help you track your reviews, what you can do as well is you can add in uh, icons from the care app to help you track their progress. So we're looking at our continents care plan here. What I can do is I can se select the icon that says toilet help. And it will bring up every single care note that we've logged in the system since we last reviewed this care plan where Alpha's has needed assistance going to the toilet. So it's very useful for helping you track uh, track their progress and help track their reviews. And what you can do then is you can select your own icons that you want to include in here as well. Um, one other thing I just wanted to show you outside of um, outside of care planning is we have something called a falls matrix. So this is very useful for risk analysis and risk assessments. So what this does is it generates the data from any falls or any accidents that you've recorded in your in your care app and it, it generates a graph matrix for you. So what this has done for us is it's grouped the number of falls that have happened by hour. So we can see here, oh, we've had a lot of falls happen between 11 and 12 o'clock. So what you can do is you can risk assess that and create action plans around that. You can also do the same for things like location as well. So we can see here that, you know, oh, there's been quite a lot of falls that have happened in the lounges, for example, in the lounge. What risk assessments can we put in place for that and so on and so forth? Um, there is technical support within the system. So if ever anybody gets stuck, you can click on technical support and chat with our team. Uh, they respond in under four minutes. There is a number you can call as well, so don't, don't worry. Um, you can contribute ideas in our ideas forum, and we will also let you know of any planned releases that are coming out as well. Uh, so you never just update, we won't just update the system without ever telling you, you're always kept in the loop of everything that, that goes on. And then the last thing I want to show you is using feature, MCM features to evidence compliance. So what this allows you to do is to, this enables you to show your evidence of compliance against Chloe's. So if I go into this and click in Chloe's, say you wanna look at safe care. Sorry, Jeannie, I am wrapping up. This is my very last thing. Uh, so uh, if you say you wanna show evidence of safe care based on S1, you can see here the features that help you demonstrate that evidence of compliance against Chloe's as well. And again, because of this, 96% of providers that use PCS are rated either good or outstanding. So I hope that all makes sense to everybody. I've raced through that in uh, record time. Normally I don't complete uh, a <laughs> complete demo in 26 minutes, but I'm hoping um, that all makes sense. But if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, I could see there was a question. 
There are a couple of questions. Um, yes. Did just one for me before I get into those. You mentioned about the Falls Matrix. Is that part yeah. of the the core system? It's not yes. an add-on or anything. Okay, no, perfect. all included. All included. All included. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So there's a couple of questions um, around integration. Yeah. So bear with me. So uh, Janet's saying they already have PCS and she said it's yeah. great. Um, so she's just asking, hello, Janet. Um, does it integrate with any um, sensor based falls technology? And if so, which ones? Sure. So um, I will check for you, Janet. I think we're if we haven't done it we're in the process of of sorting one out um but just to let you know as well we do have an open api so anybody can set up and integrate with pcs as well so we do have an open api key but with falls detection etc i will um i'll try and look at look into that for you um genie if i send i'll get sharon to send that across to you and yeah, if you yeah. want to pass it or janet if you've got your account manager they can also provide that for you as well if you if you know who that is but if not i'll try and get that across to somebody yeah well i think that'd be helpful just for us because because we're going to frequently ask questions after this so yeah. it might be useful for other people to know as well yeah um, so, so thank you um another one around integration sorry so will your sorry the track keeps moving <laughs> Will your system integrate work with GP systems such as Docbo? I appreciate you've mentioned GP Connect, which is great. So yeah. people can actually see um, the, the GP record. But I think that Docbo was asked by Jacqueline as a as an example. Yeah, so it doesn't at the moment, um, but that's not to say that it it won't integrate with them. I will I'll try I'll try and get a bit more info on that. We because I can't say for definite, obviously for confidentiality reasons, what we who we are about to integrate with and yeah, what we absolutely. can't. So um, yeah. I'll check into that uh, and try and find out about GP systems in general, though. OK, perfect. Uh, Pramila has asked, if we do MAR charts on PCS, do we have to still record on paper MAR charts from pharmacy? And also, do you have to do a medication icon for every individual medication for the time of day? So I think that's two questions in there for you, Jamie. Yeah, sure. So with um, Mar charts, um, so with our system, just as it is out the box, you can record medication, but on a very basic level, you can record what was taken on what time of day. That pretty much is it. We do integrate with some EMAR providers, though, such as Atlas and um, Medicare or vCare. Um, we do integrate so with them. So their system, if you use them, they go into a lot more detail in regards to medication where it will update and it tell you you know what time of day how many how many items are left and you can reorder that kind of thing um so for the time being yes you would have to record the medication um sorry nurse call monitoring systems that just popped up that yes definitely we do integrate with nurse call nurse call monitoring systems absolutely we do so i can answer that one off the bat um but yeah back to me back to medication um yeah so at the moment you would need to record what the medication is and what time of day but like i said it won't go into the detail that a, that a proper emar system would know yeah okay um i think we might have time for just two more questions Diane's asking, can you do pay and invoicing from PCS? Yes, I'll tackle that one and I'll tackle Domcare. So okay, um, yeah. invoicing, no. So we're not an HR provider. Um, yeah. However, we do integrate with CallCare, which is um, which is obviously an HR system. Domcare as well. Domcare, it depends what you're looking for. So if you're looking for rostering, rotoring, et cetera, we don't do that so we're not the solution for that kind of thing we are predominantly just the care planning solution so we do have some dom care providers that use us but they that's because they've got their own rostering and rotoring system in place um they use us just for the care planning side of things okay perfect okay janet did you want to ask a question i appreciate you put something in the chat but i, I maybe you've frozen okay all right <laughs> <laughs> she might have frozen there okay Oh, she's back on, I think. No. Oh. OK, well, I think we are pretty much out of time. If there's any more questions, um, Jamie, we'll collate those and then we can forward those on to you if that's OK. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. Um, no, I think we have just a couple. Sorry, just a couple of others very quickly. Um, could you give us an idea of your pricing schedule? Sure. So the ICS, uh, the, what we're agreeing with the ICS, we charge per bed. 
mm-hmm. um, per month. Uh, so it's seven pounds twenty per bed per month. Uh, and also, obviously, if you're going through the funding for that, and also it would depend if you're supplying devices, you can supply your own devices. We can supply devices for you as well. But that I can't give an exact pricing on simply because that depends on the number of yeah. uh, number of devices you would need. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. And I think training as well, is that incorporated in with the, the implementation? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. All okay. Incorporated. All right. Thank you very much, Janie. I think no worries. Thanks everything. very much for your time. Thanks very much. Bye. Take care. Bye.